autosomal dominant that's why uh, which is the most common type of pemphigus so what is the answer pemphigus vulgaris we just read that fishnet appearance etc pemphigus vulgaris yeah so this question yes i'm expecting this to come in your exam this year let us look uh, which of the following is not a criteria for igg4 mediated disease so remember this igg4 mediated there'll be uh, igg4 producing plasma cells that'll be there and what, which of the following is not a criteria story form fibrosis neutrophilic infiltrate obliterative phlebitis igg4 levels misprint more than 135 should have been yes so what is the correct answer answer is b not neutrophil actually it should be the plasma cells that'll be there so what is the IgG4 related? Just have a, a quick review of this IgG4 related disease. It is a new uh, disease. IgG4 RD is a new disease characterized by tissue infiltrate dominated by IgG4 antibody producing plasma cell. So there will be plasma cells which will be producing IgG4 antibody. So what is the criteria on biopsy for this disease? Dense lymphocytic infiltrate and also plasma cells can be there. Story form fibrosis obliterative phlebitis so basically why is fibrosis happening there is a phlebitis obliteration of the vein for death of the cell fibrosis will happen and definitive diagnosis may be demonstrated by this what is that at least one organ involvement commonly which all organ can be thyroid can be retroperitoneal fibrosis so many of them many organs even kidney can be involved then uh, <clears throat> there can be uh, pancreatitis uh, that will be happening uh, you know, inflammatory pseudotumors of orbit, lungs and kidneys also can be happening, right? So that is your organ involvement. A serum IgG4 level should exceed 135. That is the second criteria. Third one, a greater than 10 IgG4 plasma cell per high power field. So it should be IgG4 plasma cell per high power field or IgG4 to IgG plasma cells at least 40 percent so igg4 should be at least 40 percent of the total igg secreting plasma cell so this is what is the definitive diagnosis of a igg4 related disease so as i said it includes meculis syndrome fibrosis of salivary glands and lacrimal gland riddle's third actus idiopathic retroperitoneal fibrosis autoimmune pancreatitis so anything of these can come which of the following is associated with igg4 basically uh, next question, let us look at this. A 48 year old patient known case of Hodgkin lymphoma. Okay, let us look at the options first then rather than looking at it. Okay, question says last line, which of the following mecha uh, mechanism did the neoplasm primary respond to the therapy? So they have given a therapy, how did it respond? Option are phagocytosis, necrosis, inflammation induced damage, apoptosis. So now it becomes very easy for me. I need not worry about you know what are the markers for this nothing with that is a general path question so patient had a Hodgkin lymphoma he was put on chemotherapy for Hodgkin usually we give ABVD chemotherapy past two cycles of chemotherapy the size of lymph node has reduced uh, clinically so size has reduced follow-up biopsy patient showed the below finding what is the likely diagnosis so look at this the arrow mark is pointing towards Condensed the nucleus is there and also increased eosinophilia in the cytoplasm. These are your apoptotic cells or apoptotic bodies or apoptotic cells. So that is the correct answer. Death by uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy is also by apoptosis primarily. Uh, not by necrosis. Necrosis can happen in tumor because of rapid proliferation of the tumor can lead to reduced blood supply and that will lead to necrosis. Uh, next question let us look at this a uh, uh, simple one anyway i can look at the options first if you are uh, not comfortable looking at the question which of the following cell will you find characteristic uh, in pathology of this patient basically which will you find which is characteristic of the pathology so options are neutrophil mass cell giant cell plasma cell let us look a 25 year presented three months back with history of acute appendicitis he was operated post-op was uneventful now he presents with a history of one centimeter tiny swelling at the scar so incision side there is a swelling that is there so there will be now what will be which cell will you find of course there was a scar that means there was a suture material suture material is a foreign body and especially if it is a absorbable suture how do you absorbable uh, suture get uh, absorbed by the way it is by the mac giant cells or the macrophages if that was in the option so i don't have macrophage here 
then I will be answering it as giant cells. Giant cells will be seen here because of foreign body type of giant cell. Plasma cell usually will be seen in autoimmune condition, mast cells uh, in uh, allergic manifestations, neutrophil in acute inflammation. Okay, so answer to this is the giant cells here. Okay, so there are different type of giant cell. Where do you see? I've just explained it here. Langan giant cell seen in TB, foreign body giant cell, suture material, uh, even uh, for fungus also. Viral giant cells like Warden Finkardi cells in measles. Then physiological giant cell, osteoclasts are giant cells. Syncytial trophoblasts are also giant cell. Tumor giant cells can be seen like uh, Hodgkin lymphoma, RSL, which is a giant cell. Then Teuton giant cells seen in xanthomas, even in xanthidis mass also. Uh, next question, let us look again. Which of the following immunological mechanism is involved in this patient? Cell mediated, localized anaphylactic reaction, complement mediated and immune complex. So let us look. 15 year girl present with pruritic rash over skin every time she eats seafood. So you know pruritic reaction on the skin every time she eats a seafood. This is definitely allergic reaction. So she hasn't developed hypotension or anything then we can call it as a localized anaphylactic reaction which is a IgE mediated that is the correct answer here option B it's a localized anaphylactic reaction not a cell mediated not complement mediated basically which is a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction here yes oh uh, yeah let us look at this now in Albert Basin syndrome origin of the lymphoma is from this is a tricky one I uh, you know, I have I have not expected most of you to answer this, but however, once you look at this, this becomes a you know very easy question. Only thing is, this is a different name. Albert Basin syndrome is another name for mycosis fungoids. So I did not expect you from this, but yes, just to know, mycosis fungoids we all know is a T cell lymphoma. So answer is option D. So there is no logic involved in this explanation. It's just another name for mycosis fungoids or uh, Cesare syndrome is also there by the way Cesare syndrome is uh, an extension into the blood by right yeah so nothing more what do you see here you will see cell, cells with cerebriform nuclei and it's a T cell lymphoma positive for CD3 markers we already have known them CD3 4 5 positive uh, 7 and 8 usually will be negative here okay Next, a two-year-old boy presents with recurrent infections involving multiple organ systems. Extensive investigation result in diagnosis of chronic granulomatous disease of the childhood. CGD is the diagnosis. So recurrent infection, uh, which will be there, by the way, catalyst positive organism would have been there that has not been given. Which of the following most closely characterizes the abnormality in the patient? Patient's phagocytic cell. So that is what is the question asked. What is the most pathogenesis is what asked. Decreased killing of my, microorganism because of enhanced production of hydrogen peroxide. No, this cannot be the answer. You know, I mean, this is a, a log, illogical answer. If enhanced production of hydrogen peroxide, then it should have been more killing. That's not the answer. Deficiency of NADPH, that is the correct answer. Option C, impaired chemotaxis migration. This is not the answer. Impaired chemotaxis and migration. Inability to kill strepto, no, not strepto, it should be staph, if at all it has to be killed, that is also not the answer. Answer is option B. Option B, NADPH oxidase deficiency. Uh, 21, a lengthy question, let me start looking from the options then first, let me look at the option, what am I seeing in the option? Option is, okay. So last, the transfusion has been, pink urine is okay. Which of the following possible complication in this patient condition? Acute hemolytic reaction, one option, traumatic injury to the kidney, septicemia, anaphylaxis. Four options are given. So, you know, four variety of options are there. Anaphylaxis, acute hemolytic reaction are part of um, blood transfusion reactions. Uh, other two are nothing to do with the blood transfusion. Let us look at the uh, question then. 65 year old is brought to emergency department after a motor vehicle collision with motor vehicle. She suffered injury to the leg after massive loss. Vitals BP is 85, 45, pulse is 112, respiratory rate 21, 
So there is a hypotension in the beginning that is explainable. Patient is uh, probably has a lot of bleeding manifestation. Uh, then, yeah, I'm sorry, there was uh, sudden uh, some issue with uh, my laptop. Yes, so uh, let me look at this. The patient is having, yeah, so the patient is having a road traffic accident. After that, the patient is having hypotension in the given question. Yes, so I can see the patient is already having hypotension. Uh, hemostasis was achieved, that is what they say now. Uh, temperature, hemostasis was achieved, IV lines were maintained. 2 liters of normal saline was rushed. She received 4 units of packed RBCs as well. So, you know, that is what is the treatment that has been given here. Uh, an hour after transfusion is begun, she complains of flank pain. Repeated vitals show blood pressure of 10570. Although blood pressure has increased, look at this, blood pressure has increased. But, uh, you know, it is still not normalized. Heart rate is uh, 108. That's also increased. Respiratory rate 18 per minute. Temperature 101 Fahrenheit. Transfusion is stopped. And then there was a pink urine is observed in her urine bag. So this itself is now telling hemoglobinuria. Basically, hemoglobinuria is happening. That means there's a hemolytic reaction happening. This is a category 3 reaction. Hemoglobinuria is there. So, answer is it is an acute hemolytic reaction. Query, it will be because of, of course, antibodies. So, basically, how could you have prevented this? You could have prevented this by uh, cross-matching, proper cross-matching and also blood grouping. So, acute hemolytic reaction, which is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. What will be the treatment? Stop transfusion, target the blood pressure, normalize the blood pressure and then give, uh, you know, excess of fluids and you can also use the diuretics once the blood pressure is normalized so that you have flush out all the hemoglobin from, yes. So, is it traumatic injury to kidney that is happening? No, that will not lead to hemoglobinuria, that can lead to hematuria, not hemoglobinuria, not septicemia, nothing to do, only fever is there other than that, nothing else about septicemia. It is not anaphylaxis because anaphylaxis would have had articaria uh, 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 etc and also angioedema and laryngeal edema that is not given. Uh, yes. Next. The cytogenicity of solid tumor is not easily assessed especially in carcinoma cervix because. So basically we are talking about cytogenetic tests. So cytogenicity commonly we do a karyotyping. That is what we are talking about the cyt cytogenetic test or cytogenicity that is you know uh, the karyotyping this is sp not done for solid tumor especially because for solid tumors we prefer fish than karyotype why is the question asked metaphys is distinct due to contamination so remember karyotype is always done on metaphase if it was a distinct then it should have been there that it should have been used that is not the answer and due to contamination of infectious agent high mitotic rate deficient tissue sample a uh, high mitotic rate also cannot be because mo if more mitosis is there, it is better for karyotyping. Why? Because uh, all that you need to do is you add colchicin to stop in metaphase. So that is also not the answer because both of them, if there is a distinct metaphase and there is a high mitotic uh, rate, then uh, you know you, it is better to do karyotype because all that you need to do is add colchicin. That is what we do in leukemias. By the way, leukemias have very high mitotic rate. Just add colchicin to them, then you know there will be metaphysic arrest happening. So answer is uh, due to deficient tissue sample, it is unlikely because you can take lots of biopsies from there, that is also not the answer. In this, the best answer is contamination of infectious agent. So for karyotyping, uh, the solid organs uh, are difficult to do. Why? Because so multiple things are there. One is, you know, uh, we have to take these tumor cells and do, you know, culture of them. So, you know, unpredictable growth in the tissue culture for them. That is one problem. Uh, then uh, overgrowth of non-neoplastic cells by re, uh, no, uh, overgrowth of neoplastic cells by non-neoplastic cells also can happen. So you know many a times uh, these tumors can have a lot of uh, inflammatory infiltrate, which will be lymphocytes, which will be more proliferating than the tumor itself. And when you do karyotype, uh, you are not doing from the tumor cell. You are doing from the lymphocyte, which will be absolutely normal. Uh, sometimes there can be contamination from bacteria and fungi and you can get their DNA rather than the human DNA. This especially happens with, you know, cervical carcinomas, uh, you know, the anorectal also, if at all you are looking at that areas. 
then um, of course one more thing could be a necrotic sample can be there so these are the important uh, limitations of cytogenetics for solid organ so this is for solid organ tumors this won't happen most of these do not happen for uh, you know bone marrow aspirate because uh, unproliferatable growth of neoplastic we are not doing culture they are already proliferating uh, so that is how it is yeah there will be no question of uh, contamination because you are taking from the blood directly uh, non neoplastic cells will not overgrow why because in the bone marrow it is only one which is proliferating are the neoplastic cells uh, necrotic non viable again is unlikely because you have aspirated you will get many cells there next question let us look at this uh, yes we, okay, lengthy question. Which of the following is most likely present in this patient? So the question is anti CCP antibodies, cyclic citrullinated peptide antibodies, anti TSH receptor antibodies, anti thyroperoxidase, thyroid peroxidase antibodies, anti centromere antibodies. So four options are given. Let us look. 65 year female presents for evaluation of fatigue. So she is having fatigue. She is, she has recently felt fatigue, cold intolerance, constipation. So straightforward for me, the diagnosis here, hypothyroid, query I am thinking of, query hypothyroid. She is concerned that something is wrong and year, uh, as years go, she, she used to have constant diarrhea and now she feels constipated all the time. So earlier she had diarrhea, query thyrotoxicosis. So this disease probably was initially in hyper condition, hyperthyroid and later on become a hypothyroid. Physical examination reveals a small thyroid on palpation, most likely diagnosis. So what is the most likely diagnosis? Uh, yes, uh, the diagnosis could be. Now, uh, initially there was a hyper, later on hypothyroidism and also there's no swelling of the thyroid. Probably it would have happened that it is a very late stage of the disease where there is a lot of lymphocytic damage to the thyroid happening which has undergone become small fibrotic shrunken. So this could be answer is a Hashimoto's thyroiditis can be made and we have to make a biopsy uh, then we will be able to understand this and it, uh, so in the final stages initially there will be hyperplasia of uh, the thyroid uh, follicles happening that's why hyperthyroidism can be there. And answer to this question, anti-thyroperoxidase antibodies, anti-TPO antibodies. And uh, next, we'll talk about the next question. A 45-year patient, 24, question number, a 45-year presents with dementia, or oh, 45-year dementia, young age, is having a pre senilin gene mutation. So he is having a mutation of presenilin gene. Which of the following mechanism leads to early onset of Alzheimer's in him? So there is presenilin, which is one of the important cause for early onset or uh, inherited Alzheimer's accumulation of. Okay, so what is the mechanism is asked? Accumulation of presenilin protein, increased APP protein, increased gamma secretase activity, increase in alpha secretase activity. Answer is option C, which the we had discussed this in. DVT as well by the way right so you know presenilin 1 gene uh, causes increased gamma secretase activity uh, APP protein is located on chromosome 21 that's why that's a mechanism for down syndrome next question number 25 a kidney biopsy from a patient shows crescentic glomerulonephritis shows crescentic glomerulonephritis which of the following clinical scenario best fits into this patient? So basically, crescentic is a RPGN. How does the patient present? Will be having 36-year female with hematuria, proteinuria, rapidly declining GFR. Yes, this is the correct answer. Uh, option B is not. Option B is a nephrotic syndrome. Option C is a diabetic uh, new, uh, nephropathy. That is also not the answer. Option D. Uh, seven year thrombocytopenia rapidly declining GFR. This will be a TTP, uh, HUS TTP manifestation. So, answer to this question RPGN, hematuria, proteinuria with rapidly declining GFR. So, that is the correct answer for this.